there are some things that I see equestrians getting wrong about their fitness. I'm just gonna be honest, they get things wrong. And when I see them getting things wrong, say on social media, I want to say something. I just don't know if it's my place to say anything, which it probably isn't. I don't wanna offend anybody and so I thought today we would have a little bit of a chat about some things that I see equestrians getting wrong. And the reason that I want to point this out is because I don't want people wasting their time. There's some things that people are doing that they're just not doing themselves any favors and it's time to correct that. Welcome to another episode of Strong in the Saddle. I'm your host, Katrina. And before we get into today's episode about what everyone is doing wrong with their fitness, <laughs> uh, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast if you are watching this on YouTube, which yes, we are on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash at Strong in the Saddle. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have any thoughts on what I'm about to talk about today and subscribe to my channel and be sure to follow me on Instagram at strong in the saddle. And with all of that being said, let the pointing out of what's being wrong begin. Mistake number one. I think the biggest misconception that equestrians have about their fitness as it pertains to their riding is that riding is sufficient for them to be fit. And that could not be further away from the truth. Riding alone will not get you to that optimal spot of being the best rider that you can be. Obviously you need to ride and you need to ride a lot in order to become a proficient rider. But if you are solely relying on the activity from riding itself to make you a very athletic equestrian, you're not going to get there. You need more than just riding in order to become, like I said, an optimal equestrian. The biggest problem with relying solely on riding as your form of exercise and relying on that to make you into the athlete you need to be in as equestrian is the fact that riding itself involves a lot of repetitive movements and when you're doing repetitive movements like doing the same thing over and over again you start to really strengthen some parts of your body while other parts are completely neglected and so what happens is as you're getting some parts really really strong and some parts are getting weaker and weaker you end up with these huge imbalances in your muscular strength and endurance and when your body is that out of balance you actually make yourself very 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 susceptible to injury the reason you make yourself susceptible to injury is because now we have parts of your body that are just weak because they're not getting worked at all. And when something is weak, it is more prone to injury. Like I think we all kind of understand that if you're weak, you're just, yeah, you're gonna get hurt. The other reason you set yourself up for injury is because you're using parts of your body over and over again. And if you're riding say six or maybe seven days a week, or maybe you're riding multiple horses a day, those muscles that are recruited in riding are going to fatigue, they're going to get overtrained, and you can actually get it to a breaking point where your body is not getting adequate rest for those parts of your body that you're using, and eventually it just can't handle it anymore, and then it breaks. It's no different than someone who 
runs a lot and then all of a sudden they have shin splints or something like that. They're constantly using that part of their body and if they're not recovering properly, it just, yeah, it reaches a breaking point and then you get hurt and that's the last thing that we want. So part of correcting that is to acknowledge that riding is not enough. You need a well-rounded fitness program that complements your riding. And a well-rounded fitness program incorporates things like strength training and mobility and recovery. And it needs to really take into account that you are an equestrian and that there are certain parts of your body that are gonna get overworked when you're riding, certain parts that are not gonna get worked at all. And taking all that into account, developing a program that is specifically tailored for equestrians. The second mistake that I see equestrians making is not focusing on rest and recovery. And I partly attribute this to just our hustle culture of go, 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 push harder and harder and harder. And I have definitely fallen victim to this myself where I haven't given myself enough recovery. And the reason that that's a problem is because it sets you up for things like, again, injury and burnout, mental fatigue, just not feeling up to what you are required to do as an equestrian. I think as horse people, we all kind of understand the importance of giving our horses a break. We understand that we can't ride them seven days a week. We can't ride them hard all year round. There are periods where they need rest. They're like through the course of a week and over the course of say a competition season. We understand that for our horses and we really understand that giving them the rest and recuperation that they need is how we're gonna get the best out of them. But ironically, we don't really extend that same logic to ourselves. And yeah, it ends up where you might get hurt. Um, at the very least, you might just see like a decrease in performance. Maybe you're not able to ride quite as hard or like maintain balance and stability in the saddle quite as well. You might just notice little things where you used to be able to do something maybe, or now you're not able to do it quite as well or for quite as long. And it might be very, very subtle, but then all of a sudden you might really notice that there's a change because now your body just cannot keep up. You might also notice maybe you're getting sick or for me, I really notice it when I'm going too hard, I lose motivation. I just, where I am usually super gung-ho to go to the barn and tack up and go ride my horse, I just feel very ho-hum and not wanting to be out there, even though I know typically I should want to be out there. So I know that, that I call that my canary in a coal mine. If I don't want to be out there, I am not recovering and resting enough. And that is a problem. A third mistake that I see equestrians making is not prioritizing, not focusing on strength training and specifically strength training in a way that will help them as equestrians. So I've harped on this quite a bit how things like Pilates or even like yoga, it's not enough for equestrians. And as I also mentioned, riding in and of itself is not enough. You really need to put focus on strength training. And for a number of reasons, one, it's just gonna make you a stronger individual overall and stronger in the saddle, which allows you to just perform as a rider better. You're able to hold your position. You're able to control how you're cueing your horse way better. It's going to help you prevent injury because now you're just more of a resilient, stronger human being. And so you're just, your risk of injury goes down. You're gonna have increased endurance because again, you're just a fitter, more athletic version of yourself. And with that comes 
Yes, increased strength, but also increased endurance. You're able to hold yourself for longer in a particular position. Your posture in the saddle is gonna improve, particularly if you really have a training program that focuses on the back of your body, your the rear part of your shoulders, your back, and all of that. You're gonna have better position in the saddle, and you're gonna be able to just, yeah, really stay stable in the saddle, regardless of what the horse underneath of you is doing. Another mistake that I see equestrians making when it comes to their fitness is focusing on aesthetic goals and aesthetic workouts as opposed to more functional fitness. And I am definitely calling myself out here. So for many, many years, I was kind of in the bodybuilding mindset i yeah was doing bodybuilding style workouts which for those of you who don't know bodybuilding really isolates each muscle and a bodybuilding workout program typically does what's called a body split so like monday you might do chest and back tuesday you might do legs wednesday you might do i don't know arms and shoulders and it's very like breaking the body into each individual piece. But as equestrians, we use our body as a whole. And to make us more proficient at doing that, we need to focus on more functional movements, functional fitness and training. And so what does that look like? That looks like doing compound movements like the squat, the deadlift, those really big movements that incorporate a large part of our body. We need to be moving in a way that we can control our entire body through a movement because that is what is required of us when we are in the saddle. One, I think like a classic um, equestrian workout program is like lots of cardio and ab work. I, I don't know why. And then like they have like Pilates thrown in there, which again is a lot of ab work. It's it just, that's not functional. First off, cardio is just going to strip you of any muscle that you have, which I've already discussed. We need to be strong. We want that muscle. And only doing abs, and I've talked about this in a prior video, only focusing on abs and like getting a six pack does not take into account the fact that when we're riding, we recruit our entire core, which is made up of way more muscles than just our six pack. Like, yes, our six pack is involved in that, but there's also deeper abdominal muscles as well as like our lower back and into our, our hip flexors like all of these muscles around our midsection and doing an ab workout does not necessarily target all those muscles. And even if it does target those muscles, it doesn't do so in the most functional way that we would want. It's not recruiting those muscles in a way that is similar to how we would use our core in the saddle. And so if that's all you're doing, it's just not going to really translate to being in the saddle, which if we're gonna take our time to work out and improve our fitness, we wanna be doing stuff that does translate to the saddle because if it doesn't, then what is the point? We're just wasting our time at, at that point, right? So definitely taking a lens of functional and really asking every time we're looking at a particular workout or doing any exercise, looking at it through the lens of an equestrian and asking, how is this going to improve my riding, my performance in the saddle? And the last mistake that I see equestrians making is not accommodating for changes in training schedules in competition schedules throughout the course of say a year. So if I look at myself personally, in as soon as spring is here, I am riding a lot. I'm at the barn way more. 
And so, yes, I have more saddle time. I also have just more barn time where I'm doing activities around the barn. Um, and then of course, competing, showing on the weekends, all that sort of a thing. Contrast that to the winter where if it's really, really cold, we have a cold snap, I might not ride at all. I go out and feed my horses and that's about the extent that I'm at the barn. I, I'm not spending as much time in the saddle and it's my activity level in the winter versus my activity level in the spring and summer. It's drastically different. And to make sure that you are getting the best outcomes for yourself, you really need to fluctuate what you're doing away from the barn and off your horse fluctuating that to accommodate what is happening at the barn and in the saddle. In the summertime, I don't want to be training super, super hard. I don't want to be doing a bunch of hit cardio or cardio period because by the time I get to the barn and have all those barn chores and need to be riding 45 plus minutes every single day, I don't want my other activities to be burning me out to the point where I don't have energy for the barn and for riding. On the flip side, in the winter time, if I'm not spending that time at the barn, training harder in the gym is not going to be an issue because I don't need to be conserving energy for my horse for the barn most of the time. So really thinking about how much energy and how much effort am I going to be putting in with my horse and then adapting your training program accordingly. To get a bit more specific here, so it is still winter here in Alberta and so not riding as much and I've really taken this winter to really optimize definitely my lower body. I've been training my legs pretty hard, definitely harder if I was than if I was riding six days a week. I cannot train legs super, super hard and then go ride my horse. It just does not work because my muscles just do not have enough in the tank to be able to do all of that activity. So I'm taking advantage of the time now where I am not riding as much to get my legs stronger so that when spring and summer are here, I can dial it back and I can benefit from all that hard work that I've put in over the winter and have really strong legs to ride my horse even better than I did last year. And yeah, it's just a matter of allowing your training program to fluctuate. I think for me especially, I can get into the habit of doing the same thing every day, every week, over the course of months and months and months. And that can, that leads to burnout. I've definitely burnt myself out doing that and I don't want you guys to do the same. So being very, very honest with yourself and what is putting what is required of you at the barn and in the saddle ahead of your training program and then adapting your tra a training program to accommodate what you have going on at the barn. So that's kind of, those are the five mistakes that I kind of see people making. I'd love to hear your feedback. Are you currently making any of these mistakes? Have you made these mistakes in the past? I will put my hand up. I've been guilty of all of these on more than one occasion. So. Definitely would like to hear from you. If you're watching on YouTube, drop it in the comments. Otherwise, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. And again, if you're on YouTube, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Strong in the Saddle. And until next time, remember, it's always a good day to ride.